1. And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. I want to give all praises on and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash, who allowed me to do another lesson. Yahweh is who the world normally calls God. Yahweh Shai is his son, who the world normally calls Jesus Christ. And there's no God beside them. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone for being faithful witnesses to the Holy Spirit. And Shalom to the elect, whom the most I have given is to hear. And, um, you know, I had a lot, I'm thinking about a lot. Um, I'm not sure exactly what I want to name this, but, uh, you know, thinking about this precept where Pharaoh is being so hard headed to not let uh, his slaves go because of his posterity at the time, because of his prosperity at the time, you know, and uh, when you look at the, the Egyptian empire, they, you know, they had a good run. You know, so at the point in time of him, you know, seeing anything past, uh, at, at the point of time of him seeing anything past his rulership was like preposterous, you know, it didn't make sense. And, um, it's the same thing with the modern day Pharaoh Esau Edom. He don't see anything past his rulership. All right. As we know through the spirit, Esau uh, is Cain, that wicked one. As the scriptures call him the murderer from the beginning. He abode not in the truth. Okay. And then Esau has come, it came back today as America. All right. His strength through America. And each time he grew, all right, what you had in the beginning with Cain, of course, with Esau, then he came back to do the Greeks, the Romans. Each time he ruled, he had a mindset to be in first place. To where if he wasn't in first place, somebody had to die. Usually it was us. Because we wasn't with him being over us. You know, we wasn't with him X in the most high out. Which as the scriptures say, he opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. If this is not Esau, I don't know who is. You know? Again, when you go into the time of uh, Genesis, the fourth chapter with Cain, all right, because Esau wasn't uh, chosen of the Lord, you know, he uh, he went about to establish his own righteousness, you know, and you see what I got him, I got him judged, you know, and then um, what with Jacob and uh, Isaac, I mean, uh, a uh Jacob and Esau, because he, uh, Jacob received a better blessing, Esau said, bet, All right, I'm going to go about and kill my brother Jacob. So he was always about killing his brother Jacob. Going to show you too that this NWO, even let's say, for example, if it did, you know, hold up some weight, you Jakes would not be a part of it because you never, you are never a part of Esau's success. If anything, his success is the destruction of you, as it always has been. You go into the Apocrypha, same thing. The, the devil Antiochus Epiphanes. All right. Um, what's the story where uh, you know he saw he sought to kill it, the, the the Israelites? All right, which is where you have uh, the Gentiles in the New Testament. Um. He sought to kill the Israelites because, you know, you, you had men that just wasn't falling for the wickedness, man. The, the brothers of the second, the seven Maccabees. Um, our forefather, uh, what was the second Maccabees, the sixth chapter. I forgot his name, you know, but just, you know, thinking a different account of different accounts to where this devil would always try to. Establish, go about, let me see if I can find that. Which this is talking about Israel. 
All right. But um, as we see, Esau is the same way. All right. As he is the uh, the spawn of two thirds, if you will. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, that were ignorant meaning not to know, not to understand, to err of sin through mistake to be wrong. And Esau's sin was rebelliousness against the prophets of old as Moses, all right, um, to today of the, pro the prophets, the prophets of today. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Right? Which going into, as we always bring out, 2 Thessalonians. Let me see. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 4. All right? Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, show of himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And, yet, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. And this devil is being revealed in his time. All right? This devil is being revealed in his time. He's about to come down with great wrath, knowing that he had but a short time. All right? And um, if you see the different articles to where this devil is being, um, you know, shown to be weakened, he can't take the back seat to nobody. All right, you got the BRICS nations uh, coming in to be the, the next superpower. This devil's not going to take the back seat lightly. All right, and ultimately they all going to be taken down by Yahweh Shai. All right, he's going to fight Yahweh Shai and lose sorely. All right, but our Lord and Savior, he said, uh, you know, I, I found this to be pretty in very interesting. Um, Job 18 and 4. He tear himself. It's like, let me see where I want to start. Job 18 and 4. He tear himself in his anger. Shall the earth be forsaken for thee? And shall the rock be removed out of his place? Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. You know? And the light of the wicked is being put out. All right? His strength is being weakened. All right? To where his strength was, uh, you know, he had uh, a monetary, uh, you know, uh, strength over everybody or the military strength over everybody. A lot of other people's getting nuclear missiles, hypersonic nuclear missiles. All right, so his strength is being weakened, and more so through his uh his lies. All right, the people are starting to see the devil for who he is. This is why you have protests throughout the earth. All right, as the scriptures say, every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. All right, people are starting to see this devil for what he is. The scriptures also say in Jer uh, Salakia, Second Ezra sixteen, that they shall not regard their kings nor princes. But their power shall stand in their hands. All right. So this devil got a lot on his plate, you know. And it says, uh, yeah, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle, and his candle shall be put out with him. The steps of his strength shall be straightened, and his own counsel shall cast him down. You know? And it's like a, you know. You think about a man, you know, walking on a path and every step, every step he takes, it's another uh, chain around his limbs. After a while, he's going to be brought to his knees. All right. And, you know, prophecy is gaining on his ass. You know, that's why Esau is going to uh, make a, a hasty move that's going to have him in trouble. You know, he's going to put his hands upon the apple of the Lord's eyes. And the Lord is going to, the Lord is going to bust his ass. You know, sorely. He's even going to use us to do it. The scriptures speak about how, uh, you know, he shall give us a mouth where our adversaries shall not gain state nor resist. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Lord shall lift up a standard. This happened before. You know, as I, as I, as I mentioned, the Greek Empire um, in the time of the Maccabees, I'm trying to remember where it's at.
but it speaks about how this devil, Antiochus Epiphanes, had such an incurable disease, all right, in which the power of the Lord was shown through that. I'm trying to remember where it's at. You know? But at the end thereof, the point I bring that out is because at the end thereof, he gave he gave praise to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Okay? And it's going to come like that to this very day. You know, again, fast forward to today, how Esau first got America, you know, he did away with everything that was called righteous. Again, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God. All right, Job 9 and 24, we always bring that out. All right, he cut down the judges. All right, the pictures of the, the pictures of the true judges, the pictures of the one true judge. All right, the Israelites in our power, Yahweh Shah. He cut that down. But the day is going to come to where what? And like it says in Revelation 6 and 16, he's going to hide himself from that judge, that man that um he painted as a, 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 a you know, an Edomite, a, 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 a Mo, you know? So he's he's going to come to to fear and recognize the power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. Okay? It says, uh, the steps of his strength shall be straightened. And his own counsel shall cast him down. All right. For he is cast into a net by his own feet. And he walketh upon a snare. The gin shall take him by the hill. And the robber shall prevail against him. And, you know, when you think about a booby trap. A booby trap only works if you understand your enemy. Why well, set a booby trap, you know. By this particular tree, if the enemy is not going to walk past, it doesn't make sense. You have to know his steps. Now, in his devil, as the scriptures also say that his um, he's full of the sins of his youth. You know, so he's basically just uh, regurgitating his wickedness, hoping to receive a different outcome. But the outcome is always going to be the same. He's going to be destroyed, and prior to his destruction, he's going to uh, acknowledge. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Let me see if I can find that. Second Maccabees chapter nine, verse five. Right. But the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, smote him with an incurable and visible plague. For as soon as he had spoken these words, right? Let's start at the top. About the time came Antiochus with dishonor out of the country of Persia. For he had entered the city called Persepolis, Persepolis and went about to rob the temple and to hold the city Whereupon the multitude running to defend themselves with their weapons put them to flight. And so it happened that Antiochus being put to flight of the inhabitants returned with shame. Now when he came to Ecbatan, news was brought him what had happened unto Nicanor and Timotheus. Then swelling with anger, you know, so you would think that. You know, <laughs> you would think that he would have some humble humbleness about him. But no, you know, he just came back with more pride. Now, when he came to Ekpatan, news was brought him what had happened unto Nicanor and Timotheus. Then swelling with anger, he thought to avenge upon the Jews the disgrace done unto him by those that made him flee. Therefore commanded he his chariot men to drive without ceasing. And, did, and to dispatch the journey, the judgment of God now following him. For he had spoken proudly in this sort, that he would come to Jerusalem and make it a common burying place of the Jews. Right? And this day is coming again. Because remember, in order for Esau to uh, establish a lie on the earth, he has to take out the truth. He has to take out the witnesses. 
in order for him to win his court case, so to speak. But the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, smote him with an incurable and invisible plague. You know, and again, when you go into the time of the Renaissance, did not Esau have particular, um, what do you call those, uh, inquisitions? All right. Which is basically him taking out the op. <laughs> you know, those that reminded him of, or those that uh, held on to the old way of life. For the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, smote him with an incurable and invisible plague. Or as soon as he, or as soon as he has spoken these words, a pain of the bowels that was remedyless came upon him and sore torments of the inner parts. And that most justly, for he had tormented other men's bowels with many and strange torments. Howbeit he nothing at all ceased from his bragging, but still was filled with pride. All right. Hey, second, it's just the 13th chapter. He was afraid, but thus, thus, uh, thus fight basically at the appearing of Yahweh shining angels, breathing out fire in his rage against the Jews and commanding to haste the journey, but it came to pass that he fell down from his chariot, carried violently, so that having a sore fall, all the members of his body were much pain. And thus he that had a little afore, thought he might command the waves of the sea, so proud was he beyond the condition of men, and weighed the high mountains in a balance, was now cast on the ground, and carried in a horse litter, Showing forth unto all the manifest power of God. <laughs> so the worms rose up out of the body of this wicked man. And whilst he lived in sorrow and pain, his flesh fell away. And the filthiness of his smell was noisome to all his army. And I think about uh, Isaiah 14. Where, where they, they, in the kingdom, they say, it says how they shall now really look upon him and say, Is this the man that hath caused the earth to tremble? You know, roughly paraphrasing. It says, and the man that thought a little or four he could reach to the stars of heaven, no man could endure to carry for his intolerable stink. All right. Did not the devil Trump even um, call for a space force? <laughs> he therefore being plagued, he began to leave off his great pride and to come to the knowledge of himself by the scourge of God, his pain increasing every moment. And when he himself could not abide his own smell, he said these words. It is meet to be subject to God, unto God, and that a man that is mortal should not proudly think of himself if he were God. This wicked person vowed also unto the Lord, who now no more would have mercy upon him, saying thus, that the holy city to which he was going in haste to lay, even with the ground, and to make it a common burying place, he was set at liberty. And as touching the Jews, whom he had judged not worthy so much as to be buried, but to be cast out with their children to be devoured of the vows and wild beasts, he will make them all equals to the citizens of Athens. You see? And, hey, the Lord already said in Jeremiah 29, 11, that he know the thoughts that he thinks towards us, thoughts of peace. So this NWO is not going to stand. All right? Because you cannot X out the Lord's people. You can't do it. All right? And again, this is just a few stories, but... Time and time throughout the scriptures, the heathen, predominantly Esau, sought to excess out and was always sorely confounded. And his end was prior to him dying, prior to his, you know, the pain that he would face, the suffering that he would pay, face. He was met, all right, with the humility of um, bowing down to those whom he thought was inferior to him. You know, ain't that something? All right, but going back to Job 18, it says, the light of the wicked, 18 and 5, uh, no, where was I? 18 and 10. I'll start at 9. The gin shall take him by the hill, and the robber shall prevail against him. The snare is laid up for him in the ground, and a trap for him in the way. Terror shall make him afraid on every side, and shall drive him to his feet. His strength shall be hunger bidden, and destruction shall be ready at his side. Call her law to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash, by Hashem Rakakwadash, Elakia, double honest to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect.